It's now time for member statements. The member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. I, along with my colleagues here in the Legislature, am wearing the gold ribbon pin in support of every family and child affected by this life-threatening illness. As the number one cause of disease-related death for children ages 1 to 14, we need to stand united to conquer childhood cancer. The fight against childhood cancer should never be fought alone. That is what the gold ribbon campaign is about. I myself wear this gold ribbon today in honour of two people. First is Kona Higgins, the son of dear family friends. Kona was in the process of moving to Canada from the UK when he sadly passed away from cancer at the age of 17. The other is in memory of Brendan Rourke, a young man from my riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound, and to recognize the tireless advocacy work of his father, Neil Rourke, who in collaboration with an international network of parent groups and survivor networks, is raising funds and awareness for young girls and boys whose childhoods have been regretfully cut short. Three weeks ago, Neil, along with three young cancer survivors, rang the opening bell at the Toronto Stock Exchange to mark the beginning of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Neil, along with volunteers from the Childhood Cancer International and the Big Book of Care campaigns, are reminding us to do more so we can build a future free from cancer. That is, to build on the progress achieved at all levels of society and to make new drug research possible so we can ensure a brighter and healthier future for all of our children. That, me that means government, industry, hospitals, research institutes, and individual and corporate donors. As such, I respectfully ask all of us to commit to working tirelessly to ensure we give our children and youth every opportunity to grow and thrive and live in a world that is free from cancer in all its forms. It is my hope that we will soon, for the dream of my hero, Terry Fox, find a cure for all cancers. Here. Somewhere, the hurting must stop. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further member statements, the member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I proudly rise to speak of a 24-year-old young woman who is standing up in life to make a difference. Her name is Adrian Newport. As a child, Adrian had to wear a bright blue helmet to go to school because she would bash her head on walls and doors in a way of dealing with her frustrations that was understood by many, misunderstood by many. At a young age, she barricaded herself in her home and attempted to burn it down. Consequently, she was arrested and charged for her actions. She spent time in a psychiatric ward and other institutions where she was restrained, sedated on numerous occasions. Adrian wrote a book, co-authored by John A. McCurdy, The Light That Guides My Way. She outlines her challenges and sheds light on what it's like to live with fetal alcohol syndrome disorder, FASD for short. Adrian was born with FASD along with cerebral palsy. Despite her unfair circumstances at birth, improper care for her needs, and mistreatment since a young age, Adrian has accepted her challenges, she has persevered, and she is succeeding. Adrian has been working part-time in the administration office at Rigal Supports for Community Living. She is grateful for the staff and the supports of people like Donna Mercaccio, the executive director. She has also earned a community integration certificate from Mohawk College. Her dream is to have a full-time job as a counsellor, a social worker, or even a politician so that she can continue to raise awareness about FASD. I am grateful that I have had the opportunity to meet Adrienne, and I enjoyed reading her book detailing her life journey. I strongly suggest this read. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This past weekend, the Waterloo chapter of the Muslim Association of Canada invited our community to take part in an event called Embrace Syria, which is part of a larger national campaign to bring Syrian refugees to our country. And last night, there was a very well-attended rally at Kitchener City Hall to raise awareness of the Syrian refugee crisis. Our Mayor, Barry Verbanovic, spoke at the gathering, announcing that our council has committed $10,000 to the Mennonite Central Committee as it responds to this unprecedented humanitarian crisis. I'm proud to add that our government recently committed $10.5 million in aid to the resettlement of 10,000 refugees by the end of 2016. Mr. Speaker, despite the impulse to see immigrants as a burden to society, this is a notion that is profoundly mistaken. As the daughter of immigrants, I can say with confidence that immigrants built this country 
they contribute to the economic prosperity of Ontario, and they make our communities more vibrant. We are taking action in Ontario to help Syrian refugees, but we need a federal partner to address our current refugee resettlement policy. We hope that they heed Ontario's call to bring more refugees to Canada by the end of the year. Ontarians care, and I'm heartened to know that the people of my community, Kitchener Centre, do too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, today is an incredibly distressing day in my riding, especially for those people who rely on health services provided at the North Bay Regional Health Centre. Uh, today, a further 158 full-time staff at our hospital learned that their jobs are being cut by this wow. government, and more than half of those employees were nurses. Wow. This is in addition to the 197 frontline health care workers Order. already cut at this hospital. Again, the majority of them were nurses. Speaker, that's 350 frontline health care workers that are gone. The Liberal government is also closing 30 beds in North Bay, in addition to the 30 beds they already closed at this five-year-old hospital. This is not only devastating to the frontline health care workers, but more so for their patients, yes. who are now rightfully concerned about access to the quality health care they need and deserve. Speaker. Just this week, we heard that hospital cuts in Ottawa have led to rising readmission rates, negating any supposed savings and negatively impacting access to quality care. The Liberal government has clearly put self-interest ahead of the health care of Northerners. This much I want to make clear, Speaker. We, the people of Nipissing, will not stand for this. We're fed up with the scandals that leave us to pay Thank the you. price. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to take a few seconds and talk about an issue in my riding throughout the North Bears. And I'd like to read one Facebook uh, message I got from one of my constituents, and I think it'll explain the problem. Hi, John. Just a note to let you know I called Bearwise about a bear that has been hanging around my house for about a month now. Let me tell you it's a big joke, and that program should be scrapped and save the taxpayers a ton of money. I live at 72 First Street, Englehart. There are a few reasons why it cannot be shot. One, because I live in town. I understand that one. But, that, but Bearwise says it's because I have a veggie garden and raspberries growing in my yard, so I have a food source for it. Does not make sense to me. Are we not supposed to grow our own food anymore? And that's the issue this government's missing. We have people who can't use their backyards, who have to keep their kids inside, who, ha who, who are losing their lives and their livelihoods. No, their lives aren't being threatened. And you can't call 911 every time you have a bear in your yard. But these bears are in town. 20 years ago, the MNR used to do something more than helpful hints. And actually now people are forced to take matters in their own hands, and believe you me, that's not managing wildlife because bears are shot every day because they're being treated like vermin instead of game animals, which they actually are. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm in Orleans, my first complete one since being elected. It was a special time to be able to travel all around my riding to meet with community members, attend events, and help individuals through meetings in my office. I was just honoured to participate on a daily basis in the lives of the people of Ottawa-Orléans. Here are some highlights. I had the pleasure to speak to students at a few schools about what we do as public representative. It was, I was also um, very proud to attend the graduation of the grade 12 students at Sir Wilfrid Laurier High School. In June, month for senior, seniors, I also went to a festival to celebrate those people. Barbecue at Petrie Island on the Ottawa River took place in August. It was a most memorable event. 
More than 150 persons gathered to spend some time with friends and family to taste our local fresh corn. Overall, a merveilleux été passé à rencontrer. It was a great summer while I was talking to people in my community. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I want to update the House on the progress being made towards the construction of the Highway 6 Morriston Bypass. On many occasions in recent years, I have called attention to the need for a highway bypass around the community of Morriston in the township of Puslinch. Anyone who drives this route regularly knows that there is a traffic bottleneck through Morriston, which is often kilometres long. Mayor Dennis Lever and the Council of the Township of Puslinch, the County of Wellington, and the Morriston Bypass Coalition have made a strong economic case for the Morriston Bypass, and I want to thank them for their effective efforts. On June the 23rd, at a meeting my office arranged, we spoke with the Minister of Transportation here at Queen's Park to further impress upon him the worsening congestion problem and the urgency of dealing with it. The minister committed to visiting Puslinch Township. And true to his word, exactly a month later, on July the 23rd, the minister came to Wellington Halton Hills. I was glad to welcome him to our area. Today, I call upon the minister to continue his best efforts, urging his colleagues on the government side to support this project as well. The Morriston Bypass has been talked about for a generation. The time for talk is over. The very first item on the Legislature's order paper for private members' motions calls upon the minister to place the Highway 6 Morriston Bypass on the ministry's five-year plan for new construction, the Southern Highways Program. Once again, I urge him to do so. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Eglinton, Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Shana Tova. I rise today to commemorate Rosh Hashanah. In my riding of Eglinton, Lawrence, and across this great province, many members of the Jewish faith celebrate Rosh Hashanah uh, the past few days. This past Sunday evening marked Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Rosh Hashanah means head of the year and is observed by two days beginning on the first day of the Jewish year. There is a 10-day period of penitence uh, and following Rosh Hashanah, which ends with Yom Kippur, a day of fasting and atonement. During Rosh Hashanah, Jewish people ask God for forgiveness for the things we have done wrong during the past year. It also is a time to remind oneself not to repeat these mistakes in the coming year. In this way, Rosh Hashanah is a holiday that helps us to become better people and move forward. Rosh Hashanah is marked in shul by the blowing of the shofar, a hollowed out ram's horn. The blowing of the shofar is, uh, is meant to wake up the soul and turn its attention to the important task of repentance. Sweet foods such as apples dipped in honey, shala, and pomegranates are eaten to symbolize the hope for a sweet new year. Rosh Hashanah is a time to remember and reflect on the past year as we move into the next. I want to wish the entire Jewish community in my riding and across Ontario a very happy and meaningful Rosh Hashanah. To all my friends and constituents, Shana Tova. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, better late than never, as they say. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased to rise uh, in the legislature this afternoon to uh, share uh, with, uh, with you uh, about the Taste of the Kingsway Festival in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore. Every September, over three memorable days of celebration along Bloor Street, uh, we, we shut down the street and invite families, friends and neighbours from Etobicoke and beyond to gather at this uh, popular event. And true to form this year, the 18th annual festival took place uh, on a re weekend with a little bit of rain, but it didn't dampen anyone's spirits. The show went on with something for everyone, great music, wonderful food, singing, dancing, shopping, three stages of continuous live entertainment. Uh, the street was alive with over 200 exhibitors and local vendors and tens of thousands of people uh, going through the Children's Midway and, of course, enjoying the Scotiabank Dog Show. Uh, an added bonus to these attendees was that they don't, always, they don't have to drive there. They can walk there or take public transit, uh, as many events in our city uh, benefit from having the TTC nearby. 
Uh, the Kingsway is a vital component of my uh, community of Etobicoke Lakeshore, a unique op neighbourhood of over 250 businesses that has been rated one of the city's top destinations. Mr. Speaker, I invite you and all other members of the Legislature to come out to Taste of the Kingsway next year and enjoy another great event. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. Just now